In this presentation, I will argue that UVA Studio Arts Department has a limited focus towards non-representative art that prevents students from unfolding their full creative potential. If we don't fix the way the department is run, we risk educating students that will have little to contribute to the world of art. There is a great debate among artists about whether or not abstraction should be considered a real art. Many people believe that one does, need, does not need to possess any art talent to create an abstraction. Their abstract art is just a bunch of paint, lines and collage thrown together on a piece of paper. Anyone can do that is an argument used not only by general public, but also by some artists with a degree. It worries me greatly that fine arts department concentrates so much on something that is questionable by many people. After raising this question in class, my professor went on explaining how abstraction teaches composition, value, and space using simple forms. She assured us that we can use the same techniques learned in class and apply them to any form of art that we wish to pursue later on. But the fact remains that we are learning only one type of art out of possible spectrum of choices. Even if she is right and abstraction is applicable to other forms of art, how would we know how to apply it without practicing? It's like playing the same song on the piano over and over again, and the instructor tells you, I promise you can use the same notes for other melodies too. But according to my current drawing professor, Alison Hall, abstraction is created by the same way as, say, figurative art. Artist's mind is constantly thinking about composition, line quality, and space. Artists cannot make abstraction without knowing and considering the basic elements of art. My teacher claimed that creating an abstraction is an intellectual process. So how do we know when abstraction is good or bad? We can compare fine arts to music. If you are at the concert and each instrument is playing different music, it will sound chaotic and unpleasant. Same with art. Shapes, lines, and colors should work together to create one flowing artwork that is pleasant to look at. Just like with music, there are different genres of art, and within each genre there are different songs, which in our cases are artworks. One may not like certain genre of music, but might like the song, or vice versa. Same with art. You may not like abstraction, but you like this one particular art piece. Theoretically, fine arts is considered good when it's following seven principles of art. Those seven elements should stimulate senses of a viewer. I of a viewer should move around in a circular motion instead of being stuck in one place. Most importantly, artwork should evoke some sort of emotion. The vast majority of works that I have seen at the Raffin Hall Gallery are abstract. Here are some of the examples of artwork from the faculty show. The top three pieces were created by art professors that I worked with this year. According to my drawing teacher, Abstraction is an illustration of inner world of the artist. We see outside world every day, and seeing everyday objects in art does not challenge our brain as much as abstraction does. Non-representative art leaves us wondering what did the artist try to accomplish. Since the answer is different for every viewer, abstract art becomes personal. Drawing realistically, on the other hand, is considered uninteresting and banal. According to my teachers, anyone can learn how to draw from life, but abstraction is something that requires creative thought. During critiques, professors appear to be more enthusiastic and more favorable of artwork that is non-representational. Professors tend to spend more time discussing abstract art created by students and to exemplify what they want us to create. The problem is that instructors expect their students to follow a style closely, if not identically, to their own. Throughout the semester, professors spend majority of the class time concentrating on teaching their own vision of art. During fourth year, students have the freedom to develop their own portfolio. Essentially, students are free to do whatever art they wish, but after being conditioned for three years by professors to appreciate one specific type of art, students lose their own style. As you can see here, color choices, shapes, and textures become almost identical to professors. As a result, art is not progressing. Studio art professors give their students a little opportunity to explore various styles. This is an example of art that my professor chose to teach this semester. Ideas and styles behind projects are practically the same. Even when she gives us an opportunity to draw whatever we wish, she is still inclined to give positive feedback on artwork that is similar to what she's been teaching. Abstraction is not a style that works for every student. Not everyone enjoys the process or the results. I agree that students should always try to create art outside of the comfort zone. However, instructors spend too much time concentrating on one particular style. If you want to push students to try new things, 
we shouldn't limit teaching to one art movement. One of the solutions to this problem is to have art professors alternate throughout the semester in each course. For example, instead of having one professors, professor whose expertise is surrealism, we can have professors switch every two weeks or so to teach a class their own style. The downside is that students don't get to know their professors on a personal level. Another possible solution is to have more than one professor teach the class. This method is known as team teacher teaching. It has many benefits, such as increased interaction between an instructor and a student, engaged discussion among professors on an expert level, and most importantly, exposing students to more than one style. Team teaching will provide an opportunity for professors to cooperate. Oftentimes, instructors disagree with each other's way of teaching, so that when we start a new class, we are expected to forget everything we learned in the previous course. The problem with team teaching, though, is that UVA art department has a limited number of professors. UVA administration will either have to cut down the number of classes offered, which will lead to fewer available spots, or to combine classes, but the workspace will become too crowded. Each of the solutions has pros and cons, but if UVA's goal is to provide quality education to each student, then administration should consider recognizing the way studio art department is run. Teaching art is not simple, but instructors should be there for advising and, most importantly, instructing. Instructing not to favor one art style over another, but instructing to appreciate, to understand, and to discover passion for art.